In this video, we're going to get 8K Basic running on this Altair 680 computer. Now, if you haven't watched the other videos in this series, I would highly recommend that you watch them first. That'll give you some good insight as to how we got to where we are today. To make that easy to find, I've put a playlist to the videos in the description right below the actual video that you see here. So I'll go ahead and watch some of those first to get up to speed is where we're starting today. <clears throat> Now in the last two videos, we were running in a minimal configuration with just 1K of RAM. Obviously we'll need a lot more RAM to run 8K basic. The board you see here is a 16K static RAM. This is the only board that MIT's ever put into production for this Altair 680. And it works well for running basic. The basic itself only takes about 7K. That leaves another 9K or so for programs, which is uh, plenty for most of the programs you run into. So this will work out well. Now to add this board into the computer, we're gonna to have to take advantage of the expansion slot that we showed in the very first video. And that's this slot right here. Now the board doesn't plug directly into the slot. Instead, you use this expansion board here. It's a riser with three slots. It goes into the slot, and then the boards go horizontally out of that. So let's go ahead and get that board installed. All right, I have the three slot riser and the memory board installed. And if you look closely, you can see that this free end has spacers in it that hold it off the main board. And then this will provide spacing to the next board if you were to install it. And there's another set of those over there. Now, once you've put this together, it's held in place here and here, especially if you had two or three cards in here, it would be kind of a rigid block of boards and it's not easy to get out because of these transformers so this certainly isn't like plugging and unplugging boards in an s100 chassis for example this is more of a permanent set it up and leave it because this is a bit floppy and you can't push boards in easily so more of again a, a permanent setup not great for pulling boards in and out for an experimental type of uh, system all right now as you expect i've done some thorough memory tests on this to make sure we're in good shape and now we can go ahead and try loading basic The tape you see here is 8K basic for this Altair 680. And this is a giant tape. Uh, it's much bigger than anything I've worked with. It's actually almost three times as long as 8K basic for my Altair 8800 is. Uh, the reason for that is because it's encoded with Motorola S records as opposed to a binary format. If you recall, the S records are an ASCII representation of the binary data. So right off for every encoded byte, you've got two bytes on tape. And then for each S record, there's also 12 bytes of overhead with that S record. And Motorola, excuse me, Altair wrote these with just 16 encoded bytes per S record. So in the end, you have 42 bytes on tape for every 16 bytes that are actually gonna end up in memory. So a big waste of tape and time getting this loaded. Uh, because of this, this tape is gonna take over half an hour to load on the teletype, which is just unbearable if you ask me. And then you're going to turn around and probably load a program, and those typically take 5 to 10 minutes depending on the size. For example, if you wanted to turn on your computer and play a game of Star Trek, you were looking at 45 minutes on a good day with no errors. And on a productivity tool that a computer should be, that's, that's just ridiculous. Um, sadly, this could have easily been fixed, pretty much using the same technique they used on the 8800. With a two-stage loader, you would have a small loader at the beginning of the tape that the L command in the monitor would load. It would be an S record program, load in about five seconds, under 50 bytes, very simple. It would then turn around and read the rest of the tape, which would be in a binary format with a checksum every 256 bytes or so. Basically, the exact same format they used for the 8800 payload would work just fine. Then this tape would have loaded in a third amount of time, basically the same as the 8800. Um, but they never did that. It would have been free, but it just helped the customer. And in fact, when they came out with the assembler editor package, they still left it full ES records and it's even longer and took even more time to load. And when they came out with a cassette, which could have loaded this in under five minutes, they still left it fully ES records. So it took three times longer than that. It's almost like they intentionally kept this worse than the 8800 just like they ran it at 500 kilohertz instead of a megahertz to make sure it was worse than the 8800. And it, it worked because this product never sold that well. I mean, it, some of their decisions still don't make sense to me. But enough of me being on this soapbox, let me get off of that and we'll go ahead and uh, actually stick this into the teletype and get it started. 
All right, I have the teletype on. Let's go ahead and turn on the computer. Halt, reset, run. Come over here to our teletype. And I can type the L command. So now it's ready to load. So then we'll just start this paper tape. I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up to the take-up spool that you see here so I don't have as big a mess. And we'll take care of that uh, when we're done. We'll be able to take a look at it and see it all finished. Now again, this process will take about a half an hour, a little more, assuming we have no errors. Unfortunately, you can't just walk away and come back in a half an hour and see what's going on. If an error occurs, you want to be there when it happens. Because one good thing about S records is that they can actually be restarted in the middle. We just back the tape up a few inches, hit load, and keep going. But you have to be there when the error occurs. So um, again, unfortunately, we're going to have to baby this thing while it goes on. All right, I've encountered my first read error. We're about a third of the way into the tape. And what happens when the monitor gets a read error for the load command is it goes back to the command prompt. However, the tape continues, so all this S record data is being typed in as if you were trying to use the monitor, and the monitor is complaining about all these commands and throwing out the prompt over and over. Now, it's not echoing anything we're seeing because that echo flag is still set. But the fact that the thing started printing and we're seeing all these prompts come up, we know that it's aboard of the load command. So what I'm going to do is I got it fairly quick. I'm going to move the tape back about five or six inches and then type the L command again and then start it. Now I won't see the L command because it's uh, it's got the suppression on. But that way I can continue the process. Here you can see the dispensing spool and the take-up spool working. The take-up spool is an old spring round uh, mechanical winder made by Vanell back from the 1940s and early 50s. But this is how we keep the mess off the floor as it goes along. I've had a second error now that I've uh, gone ahead and recovered from, so we have two errors along the way, but hopefully those have both been fixed correctly. Alright, this is getting really close. I've had a total of five errors so far. Um, so not a fun process, but hopefully we're about to finish this up and we can actually have basic running. Here comes the tail. And when it finishes, hopefully we'll see it turn echo back on and uh, S record, part of an S record in the trunk. I guess all those are the nulls at the end of the tape that it's complaining about. All right. Cross our fingers here. All right, I'll jump to zero is where basic starts. Ah. All right, well, 
that feels good to have that working. So. Well, two plus 22, good enough. I was gonna try to fix that double uh, print before this video, but um, I got more, more involved in making the video than tearing open this teletype again. But anyway, uh, we're up and running. Um, I'm going to do a video cut here and go ahead and we'll start uh, playing with basic just a little bit. So as you saw during the sign-on, I don't know if it's still readable here or not. This is version 3.2. I don't understand the version. The Rev 3.2 matches uh, 8K basic over in the 8800 world. And these two are very equivalent in terms of features and capabilities. And it runs quite nicely on this machine. So let's write a simple program. Uh, basic doesn't care that that space is missing after the four, so I'm not gonna bother fixing that. Ah. This is getting ridiculous. Print the line number. All right, so our little program works, and now we want to save it. How would you do that? Well, there are no save commands, there are no load commands in 8K Basic. Instead, you would just turn on the punch and do a listing. So we'll type list come back here and turn on this punch and hit return. All right, let me go into local mode. Get some trailer. Got to turn the punch on. Um, I had garbage here at the beginning Looks like I should have put out some leader in front of this. Hopefully I can find a spot to load it. All right, so let's do a new. Oh, I'm in local mode still. Let me go back online. All right, so we're empty. So let's go ahead and show you how we would load a tape. Not sure what in there is garbage and what's part of my uh, save, but. All right, so that worked. Um, whenever you punch a tape, the okay as you list it gets punched onto the tape. So when it gets rid in, it gives you a syntax error, which is basically normal. So as far as basic was concerned, you just type that program in. There is no load or save commands. And now you can see it in there working. That's how you load and save commands. Figured I should wait for that to stop. So that's how you load and save programs, I should say, in basic. All right, well, I'm not gonna do a demonstration of this version of basic. It's been done 100 times in the 8800 videos. Again, this is very much the same as 8K Basic over in the 8800 world, but I wanted to give you a feel for what it was like to get it running on this 680. And of course, that half hour load time, plus the errors along the way, plus then loading another program, I mean, it's just, it's just unbearable. And again, the fact that MIDS did nothing about it, they could easily cut it by roughly a third. Um, I'm not sure what their thought process was. But anyway, one of our main goals with this computer is to try to get rid of paper tape and somehow use this in a more efficient format using the tools of the day. And we're gonna get into that uh, when we try to add a disk drive to this computer. Now next, we're gonna look at the assembler editor. 
Uh, it was also completely paper tape based, but we need that in order to write the code uh, add support for a disk drive. Um, anyway, that's the next video. We're going to take a look at the assembler editor for this.